and welcome to the episode 279 of What A Fab Day. I am your host, Simon Mas. Today, among other things, we have the first official autograph session of the Beatles, the first time they completed a song in the studio, and the completion of Blue Jay Way. Let's start the episode with the 6th of October 1960 evening engagement that the Beatles, featuring Pete Best on drums and Stu Sutcliffe on bass, had at the Kaiser Keller Club in Hamburg, West Germany. Their first residence in town had been moved to the new club after the closure of the Indra two nights before. Busy day in 1962. With the release of their first single, Love Me Do, on the previous day, the Beatles showed up at the Dawson's Music Shop in Witness at 4 pm for a half hour autograph signing session, the first one of their entire career. The band put their signatures on the label of several copies of the single, making them one of the rarest pieces of Beatles memorabilia on the market. Later in the day, the lads had another autograph signing session at the music shop, still in witness. After meeting their fans, the Beatles were brought to the Holm Hall in Port Sunlight, where they played the show in front of 500 people, despite the official capacity of the hall was only 450. It was the third show they had had at the venue, and the third time a similar unofficial arrangement had been made due to the high ticket requests. In 1963, the Beatles had another live engagement, this time at the Carlton Theatre in Kirkcaldy, Scotland, for the second date of their Scottish mini-tour, put together by promoter Albert Bonici. The concert had been organised by the management of the town's rate barroom, but the venue was deemed inappropriate by Beatles manager Brian Epstein, and so, the concert was moved to the carton. The new management policy, strictly observed, was that the Beatles would only perform in proper theatres, for security reasons. More than 1,500 people attended the two houses. On the 6th of October 1964, we have a first. The Beatles entered the EMI Studio 2 in Abbey Road for a session with the song to be recorded still unfinished. This probably didn't come as a surprise, since the band was working really hard with live appearances and gigs of all kinds, and it couldn't be expected that they could still keep on producing new material full on. The song, Eight Days a Week, still needed some work to fix the arrangement, especially for the intro and the end of the song. Given that the piece at this stage was being considered to be the Beatles' next single, the work was of uttermost importance. Between 3 and 6.45 pm and 7 and 10 pm, the Fabs experimented with an acoustic intro, a vocal intro, and the instrumental intro that ended up being used for the song, with a famous fade-in, another first in the pop world, created at a later stage, during the mixing. By the end of the day, 13 takes of 8 days a week had been taped. Buried between proper takes, one can hear John Lennon playing the guitar riff of yet another song soon to be finished and tackled by the Fabs. I feel fine. After the end of the session, John, Paul and Ringo went to the Adlib Club, where they relaxed with Cilla Black, Mick Jagger and the Ronettes. Moving on to 1967, with the editing of the Magical Mystery Tour film going on at Norman's Film Production, we find the Beatles again busy at the EMI Studios in Abbey Road. Between 7 pm and 2 am, Cello and Tambourine were overdubbed on take 3 of Blue Jay Way. The cello was played by Peter Willison, who received £27 for his contribution, about £500 in 2020 money. This completed the work on the song. And it also completes the work on this episode. As usual, if you want to support me and contribute to the well-being of our growing community, 
you can do worse than visiting www.simonmas.com support. Tomorrow, we'll see the Beatles working on two more Harrison compositions. For the moment, I wish you a good day and a fab continuation. Simon Mas, music you love.